We're back in the Tian Chan mountains of Kyrgyzstan after mid-Asian ibex. Of the three hunters on this extraordinary trip, Tomo Svetik of Artemis Hunting already has his trophy animal. Now it's all systems go to get Rob and Craig theirs. Not everyone understands trophy hunting, but there's no other way to make this pay. If you shoot just for meat, you won't get any money. But if it's trophy hunt, we are talking about thousands and thousands of euros. They sell one trophy, which keeps whole camp going. With Ibex spotted grazing in the distance, Rob is dispatched with Urkis to get one. The scale of the exercise is plain to see, and unfortunately, so are the guys. The Ibex herd disperses before they are anywhere near taking a shot. We thought there were four or five Ibex there, and when they started running, it was 15 or 20. So it's just so difficult to see them at that well camouflage. So, never stop learning. It's just how it is. After a morning of riding and glassing, we head ever upwards into the snow line. This silhouette on the cliff top gives renewed hope. We're at 3755 altitude. Some ibex in front of us. We've got some on the line, and I believe there's some just over the edge. So we need to kind of look. But Urkus has been up to have a look at them, but we're worried about the daylight now. So we're going to call it a night, and we're going to go up tomorrow on the horses around the back of the mountain range, and then try and come down on top of them. We've moved us to another location now, we're only about 600 yards up, and went out. We're searching the skyline to see if there's any ibex nearer to us and that we can shoot at tonight. And the reason for that is we're in a very big valley here, so if the wind changes direction, it'll just blow our scent straight to the ibex. The valley will be clean in the morning, there'll be nothing for us, so it's better to take your chances while you've got them. So we're exhausting every opportunity now to see if we can actually find something that we can shoot at tonight. Um, instead of taking the risk for the morning, it's not looking promising. We haven't got a lot of daylight left. It's looking like we're going to be camping here tonight and taking our chances. The day is all but over, but then Rob glasses the valley floor and spots these animals. We've come over the other side of the ridge and there's another herd of ibex on this side. There's three very mature fellows there, chaps. So uh, we range like 698 yards. We've got a little bit of wind, so I'm gonna have to aim just on the front of the shoulder. But um, I could, I've got time to place myself really well. So let's see how we go. Yes, okay, okay. Oh. What a great effort. The ibex drops where it this stands. <laughs> it was a tool, did it? Come on. But what a shot. First ibex, and uh, look, I'll, I'm sure I'll be back. I probably don't need to shoot another one myself, but I'd love to be here to see my friends do something like this. It's very, very special. Fantastic shooting. It doesn't matter if you can say to somebody, do this, do that, do the other, but at the end of the day, it's a very, very small target. And um, fair play to the guy. It just died instantly. It couldn't have been any better. It wasn't easy, so yeah, I'm, I'm so, so pleased that I was there and I saw it. The guides moved the Ibex to a suitable place to set up camp. What a climax to a very challenging day. Rob has walked miles. Even Urkis is suffering in his wellies. I felt embarrassed yesterday. I was climbing up a scree slope and um, Urkis was, he's in Wellington boots. We came down a rock face that if I'd been in Europe, I would have put a rope on for. And uh, the guy's flying down there in his Wellington boots. Had a blister at the end of the day. 
we we fixed him up a bit, which uh, which is good. But uh, they just don't complain. Tomo's man on the ground in Kyrgyzstan is Arvat. He tells us about the sort of men Erkis, Ulan and Aman are. All the guys are locals raised in these mountains, been hunting since they've been at teenagers or something. So they have a lot of hunting experience. Most of the year they do the cattle farming and stuff in the, in the summertime. And when it comes to the hunting season, they come to the mountains uh, to guide. They're not allowed to shoot uh, ibexes until 2016, and the Marco Polo have been banned like for 20 years or something. Okay. Tell me about the gold teeth. It's an Asian kind of mentality, showing your wealth. If you get golden teeth, even if it's copper or something, showing your wealth. To get to know our guides a bit better, Arvat asks them yes. some general questions on our behalf, such as favourite Hollywood star. <laughs> So the Muscles from Brussels has made his mark here. And as Rob's pony is called Jackie Chan and Tomo's Tyson, we get an idea of their screen heroes. And what if they had all the money in the world? <laughs> <laughs> he would lay just on top of it and, and share it to the people who goes by and it's like, you need some? There you go, there you go. Pulling the trigger is a tiny, tiny part of what this is about, right? Most people like to come and do a lot of shooting. I wanted to get one shot and I wanted to do it right. And I'm extremely satisfied and pleased that I managed to do that for the sake of the animal and for the sake of my friends around me and for the sake of myself. And that makes me feel well about it. But um, yeah, it's just, it's magic. I couldn't recommend it more highly if that's what you want. It's a beautiful place and um, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. As they carefully pack the meat, they give Rob the retrieved bullet. Craig's rifle is a 300 Remington Ultramag, so that's the case and the bullet. Um, but if you look, it's really opened up. And at 698 yards, that's pretty impressive that we're still packing a hell of a lot of energy. So delighted to have found that. The group is all a bit grimy by now, and so is the kit. Rob loves the idea you can throw everything okay. in a stream and give it a darn good wash. We've been on horseback for about the last five days now, and things get very dusty and dirty quickly. So my equipment needs to really be able to cope with that. In this case, I've got a Blazer R8 in 308. It's a smashing bit of kit, very durable, and puts up with a lot of hammering. And most importantly for me, I can do this with it. I can clean the thing in the field. I've got a blazer bipod there. Nothing to rust or corrode on that. I've got Swarovski optics. Again, I need to be able to do this. Get all the dust out the lenses. And with the rifle, the same goes. Now I was in Scotland the week before last on the stags and um, I fell over in a peat hag and blocked this barrel um, and actually it, uh, I was able to blow the barrel out and just wash it in the stream and hey presto we have a pretty dust free gun now. Tomo and Rob are now heading back to camp taking both Ibex off the mountain leaving Craig to continue the hunt along with Aman. He has one day left to find his Ibex. It's a very special ride home back along the mountain passes and then two hours along the river bed. Everyone's thoughts are with Craig who will push hard for another day. While we wait for him, Dr Rob has some words of advice for any mountain hunter. One crucial thing that I absolutely cannot rate more highly is coconut fat. You can use it for absolutely everything. You can eat it. 
You can use it on burnt skin if you've got Stop sunburnt, me. but you can also use it, if, like me, if I get a sore ass or something, I can put it on my ass. It's antibacterial, use it on your skin, stick it on your blend when it's all sore and horrible. It does everything. I used to bring a lot of different sort of ointments, if you like, up in the mountains. Now I just bring that. It serves the purpose. You can even fry eggs if you're lucky enough to find some eggs in it. Oh, oh yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> a jar of it, I think it's about eight quid, but it lasts forever. I would use it on my gun if, um, if I had nothing else to protect the metal components. I'm sure it's better than having nothing, but I use it for absolutely everything. Life will never be the same again. And thankfully, Craig returns just in the nick of time. Tired and without his Ibex, but it's been a blast. He's tried to punish me a little bit. He wanted to come home yesterday. I said, no, no, shoot. He was walking the horses down the mountains and the horses were stopping him because horses didn't want to go down. So he, was, he had a, a bungee, if you like, and I was miles behind me because it was, oh, it was stupid. I've got blisters all over my feet. And then when he got to the bottom, he walked 200 yards with the horses, so I had to walk to him. <laughs> but no, it was good, it was a good adventure, really good. David has also had a trip of a lifetime. Plus, the guys have finally fessed up about the pony nuts. It isn't a horse's testicle, it is cheese. But the mm-mm, didn't tell me that at the time. They only revealed that later on in the trip. So it is cheese, salty cheese. So I was eating salty cheese and Rob Gearing knew it was salty cheese. So you lot are horrible. <laughs> if you want to find out how you can get yourself a mid-Asian Ibex, contact Artemis Hunting at artemis-hunting.com.